So I first started getting into this back in 2005 when I was first learning how to meditate. And uh, when I was introduced to the music, it was a whole catalog of stuff I had never heard before. And uh, it really blew my mind. I was instantly captivated by it. Um, it was very drone-like and fantasy-like, and it would take you on these wild journeys. And it was very psychedelic in nature, which was my cup of tea. And, uh, and in a lot of ways, it mirrored what I was doing in the trance world where the trance world is, is also with the same intention, which is to put you into this psychedelic state through music. It's, it's using that pounding, repetitive rhythm to kind of just make you lose yourself in the beat and in the dance, and then you have this transcendent experience. So the two went hand in hand, and it was just completely fascinating. Shortly after, I was able to meet the world-leading authority on binaural beats, a guy named Mark Serto, who's become a very, very dear friend since then. And uh, he's the one who introduced me to the binaural beats and all of the science behind it. He was teaching me about the power of harmonics and sympathetic resonance. And man, it was just completely mind-blowing. Now, Mark is like a mad scientist when it comes to binaural beats. Um, he was the chief engineer for Bob Monroe at the Monroe Institute, uh, which is pretty much, uh, many of you know, is the source of all things binaural. So I think it was around 2009 when I got this gig working for these scientists out of the University of Miami. And they had put together this program for behavior modification with children who had ADD, ADHD, and mild forms of autism. And uh, they asked me to make some music for them following their guidelines and their binaural beats. And they added in a few of their own things, uh, affirmations and other things. Um, but it was fascinating because I did about 150 songs or so and in that, in that time, I really, really got to experiment and get good at what I was doing. And it was great because I was really just able to learn so much, you know, getting into experiment with lots of things, uh, getting to perfect the binaural beats, which is just the binaural beats alone is enough for you to have a complete transcendent experience if you listen to it for more than you know 30, maybe 60 minutes. It will really have an effect on you. And uh, then you combine that with some of the other stuff I was playing with, the toroidal math, uh, the Nikola Tesla's 369 principle, um, and then all of these things combined, um, incorporating fractal elements to, to not only the tempo, but to the meter and then to different pitches and LFOs and modulations and just really going off on it. I mean, the binaural beats alone is enough for someone to have a complete transcendent experience if you listen to it long enough. Um, and now we were incorporating all types of other fractal elements, you know, basically echoing um, the math in LFOs and modulations and in frequencies and in delays and and just all that kind of stuff stacked on top of each other, reinforcing what we're trying to enforce with the binaural beats. It's really powerful. So some people think that the binaural beats are located down in the bass section of the song, and sometimes it can be. Uh, in my song, I'm using them in the mid-range section, so if you come a little closer, I'm gonna show you how they work. As I bring you in, focus in on the purple part of the mix console. Are you listening? Now I'm going to show you where they are. And then when you put the other one in, you're creating that tone, that rhythm. Well, that is what we are trying to get your brain to and train to. Because you need, when you slow down, um, there's an opportunity to go through a door to a deep, deeper you. Let's put it back in and see if you notice. So the idea is to build these uh, melodic soundscapes that are the distraction from those binaural beats. 
and uh, it's challenging because the binaural beats have to remain in a single tone for a long ass time. We're talking like 30, 60 minutes minimum. And that's how long it takes for it to really have a full effect on you. So it's very difficult to remain interesting without changing chords or changing notes or doing anything over top of that. Just kind of like one droning tone, just which, you know, is cool for five minutes, but to make that interesting for 60 minutes is, is a whole other thing. You can even get to a state where the outside world and the dream world are indistinguishable. All right, sounds like I've made some pretty good headway on this. Let's go try it out and see how well it works. So in the soundscape of drones and repeating patterns, there's this kind of rhythm to it and there's this kind of trance to it. It kind of, kind of puts you out and you start to fall asleep a little bit. You get more and more relaxed and you sink more and more into it. And if you sink down too much, you're just going to fall asleep. You're just going to dip right off the edge. So I have to do things to kind of wake you up a little bit. Not too much, not, not too disturbing, but just enough to kind of be like, oh, here's reality again. And when you do that, it puts the person into this thing called the, the hypnagogic state, which is a state just between sleeping and, and being, being awake. It's kind of right in the middle there. And if you can hold that state long enough, uh, you can really have some crazy transcendent experiences. This is like, wow. I always like to put kind of a crescendo in my music, you know, a blow up, if you will. Um, and so a place where, where, you know, that kind of mirrors the meditative experience, you know, so it's kind of lulling you into this trance, but it's, it's just subtly building up to something. It's building up to something incredible. You know, in meditation, it's like you get into this repetitive pattern where you're, uh, where you're just putting away your thoughts and there's, you're putting away thoughts and you're putting away thoughts and there's kind of this rhythm to it. And then before you know it, there's this space. And in that space, there's just this little, this thing I call it a kiss, like just kind of kisses you. And there's just this overwhelming euphoric love and complete apprehension of what's happening. And uh, if you're lucky enough, you see some geometry patterns and maybe some archetypes whispering some things to you, but it's completely fascinating. So I wanted to bring that fascination and the element to the music so that it's kind of building you up to this thing. You don't really know what's happening. And then it gives you that surprise kiss, that little that you didn't see coming. I've been on a mission to heal the world through consciousness and love and music for probably the majority of my career now. Years ago, when I was just beginning to have some moderate success, I flew my mom down to see me in concert, and after the show and after all the madness of after parties, she leans over and says to me, you have been given a gift, use it for good, use it for good. And it was like everything stopped when she said that to me. And five months later she was dead of cancer. And that was our last real moment before she kind of... Um, while she was still fully herself, 
And uh, so that moment really just is ingrained in me and those words just struck me. And uh, so ever since then, I've just made it my mission to, to just bring love and awareness into my music. And, um, and it's funny because it's, it's actually quite psychedelic and cool to, to be like that. <laughs>